Jacobs and we're, I'm here today to do a pull on this canvas which is called Country Dance and it is number H76 and we are having different people pull threads to give you an idea of the sort of things you can do. We have envisioned our stitcher for this canvas to be somebody intermediate who's not afraid of the threads, who's not afraid of doing some stitches, nothing too elaborate. So I'm going to start with the background and I am using caviar, silk and ivory, color number 40 and that's because to use a very, to use a very dense black would draw all the attention away from the canvas. So I thought if we use a softer black like the caviar, we'll keep the attention where it belongs, which is in the canvas. Then for the curtain or the wallpaper at the back, I'm not sure what it is, but I chose velvet because it gave that dense flocked um, image that would be brocade if it's a, a, a curtain and it would work as wallpaper as well. And the colours I chose of the velvet. For the green I chose V252 and for the oranges I chose V244 and V243. There is a light stripe down there, you probably can't see it too well for, on the video but it's there. And for the floor I chose Burmilana. Now Burmilana is one of those threads that people turn their noses up at, but I love it because it has great texture and you can make it work with the colors. See how pretty that looks. And for um, this, I would envision doing a horizontal, maybe a horizontal brick. Oh, I didn't say for the threads here, I would see doing um, a vertical cashmere picking out these blocks in a cashmere stitch. I think that would be really pretty. Okay, let's go on to our lady. For her dress, I pictured something sort of diaphanous and floaty, and you want to have a stitch that's directional. And I'm very, very fond of interlocking goblin because you can make it work in areas, you can make it work directionally. And I chose for her dress, I chose flare, the white is F502, the red is 529, and the peach color is 526. Her face, to me, looks exceedingly yellow, so I wanted to sort of flesh her up a bit, so I chose pearl cotton for her face, number 950. For her bonnet, I thought it would be fun to do silk, so I chose a neon rays in N22, and for this little yellow flower, I decided I'd use a little yellow star bead. And all of this I would do in Continental, together with her curls, which I chose a boucle yarn, color 59. For her shoe, because we have to bring a little sparkle in somewhere, I chose Petite Frosty Rays, color 021, just for that little shoe that's peeking out underneath. For our gentleman, I decided to use silk robe silk road fibers in these three colors for his straw hat and i would envision you doing a long and short stitch here to get that kind of spiky movement for his skin tone i chose pearl cotton that's color 754 also in a continental now for his suit jacket i chose mandarin floss in black m822 i in my experience the stitches really don't show up when you're doing black, so I wouldn't bother doing anything special here. You can either do an upright brick if you want or just do it in, in tent. The edging is this pretty mandarin floss blue, and for his shirt underneath, I decided to go with the silky version of that. So I chose panache in color 35, and this blue is 848. For his shoes, I went with the rainbow linen because I wanted something that would be sort of tough and booty looking. And you can also use the dark color, color 490, for his beard as well. And that's my take on this canvas. Thank you. Hello, I'd like to welcome you to our country dance. We are going to take this piece from a beginner to an intermediate and the way we're going to do that this time is going to be through the choice of our threads. 
The way I'm going to start is in the background right here where the green and the brown is and we are going to use a cotton seagrass and the way I envision this is in a slanted goblin so that it gives a paneled look to the background. On our man dancer I'm using pepper pot which is a silk but it's got a nice sheen and it'll give it a nice rustic look. For his, his suit, we're using Gloriana. And this will give it a sheen. And in the jacket area and in the legs, I would use a hesitation stitch. This way it gives a little texture to the body and a little movement. For our female dancer, again, we're going to use the Gloriana Pearl, and we are just going to do a regular continental basket weave for this and let the threads do the talking. For our border and around here on our shoes, we're going to be using two strands of impressions. This will give us a nice soft effect and still make a differential. In our dancer's hair hat. I'm using neon rays because I want to give it a pop and a little bit of shine. With the skin, we have Splendor skin tone cards. So this way she can match up the guy and the female together. Again, in our bottom, we would be using two strands of impressions and a Ver uh, varied cashmere stitch on the floor. Shouldn't take long and it should be very easy to finish this piece. This is Stephen from Rittenhouse Needlepoint and I'm here today to talk about my thread pull for the country dance. So our stitcher today is an advanced stitcher which meant that I could pretty much do what I wanted when it comes to pulling threads for this canvas. I think um, what I did in terms of pulling threads for this canvas is I used the title of the piece as my guiding light. So Country Dance is part of um, two canvas, uh, I don't know, duplex, <laughs> duo. Uh, there's a Country Dance and a City Dance. So I thought it was important that this one be kind of countryfied in feel, and I chose threads accordingly. So um, for the background, I chose some stranded cotton over dyed from um, sim simply, uh, no, sampler thread from the Gentle Art. Uh, one's pine and one cinnamon. And I thought that might be nice. They're gently variegated, so um, obviously they're in a dance hall and I thought um, it's likely not to be the shishiest place. So probably a high sheen wouldn't be appropriate. Um, and stranded thread would give the stitcher a lot of options in terms of what they wanted to do. For the figures themselves, um, the gal is in a, uh, well, a fancy dress, I would call it, but then again, she's a country gal, so um, she probably doesn't have a whole lot of money, so I'm thinking silk wouldn't be appropriate. Um, so what I chose was panache, which is a rayon thread, um, and I think it will give uh, a shiny appearance, um, but at the same time, maybe not the elegance of silk of silk. So um, I might be overthinking this a little bit, but um, that was my choice for the dress. For her hair, I went with um, a stranded cotton again, thinking that it was probably a modest handkerchief or something, into which she perhaps put a little ribbon flower. So I chose neon rays for the ribbon flower. And her gentleman friend, um, I chose some modest threads there as well. 
um, Burn Moana for his suit, which I thought would um, give the appropriate uh, wool look, but maybe not um, the heaviness of wool. So that uh, Bermelana, the thing that I like about Bermelana is that it's a wool, but you can also use it and see the stitch pattern. Um, it's not as hairy as some wools, and so it doesn't obscure the stitches as much. And I felt like uh, a cruel wool would be simply too countryfied. So um, Bermelana seemed like a logical choice, and there was a good color match for his shirt. Um, I was a little bothered by um, the solidness of the blue on his shirt, so I chose um, Soie d'Alger from Painter's Thread. The colorway is Waterhouse, and um, it's over dyed, as you can see, kind of grayed. I grayed, definitely grayed the blue a bit. I felt like um, his shirt was more likely to be um, many different hues of blue than just a solid kind of brand new looking blue. But um, you might disagree with me on that call. Um, there's something to be said for the solidness of the blue, matching the solidness of the red and the solidness of the yellow, kind of calling out the primary colors there. Um, now that I'm looking at it here, but I did like the idea of having more of a weathered look on the gentleman. It took me a while to find this sort of what I consider Van Gogh yellow on his, um, on his hat. That's a hard color to find, that yellow ochre. Um, that's really sharp, but also very attractive at the same time. And I kind of gave up trying to find a straw-like thread um, so I just went with um, the closest color match I could find, which was in Appleton wool, the tapestry wool, and I figured we would just have to find a stitch that would work and look like uh, a straw hat um, using the wool thread. As for um, the skin tones, uh, that's one of the things about this paint, about this canvas that I'm not super crazy about. The um, gal, she has uh, a very artificial look on her face, so I softened it a, a bit and tried to choose something that was a bit more ivory and a bit less artificial, and um, a complementary color for her skin tone, which is um, Soie d'Alger S3390, I felt like that was a little less aggressive than some of the um, flesh tone that was painted here, and the two make for a softer combination. And then I chose another um, Soie d'Alger skin tone uh, 3596 for the gentleman, which I felt complemented nicely, but also um, called out more peachy tones, um, which I think, uh, and you know what, I think I just called that wrong. The peachy tones was for the gal, and the um, sort of more dusky tones was for the gentleman. So, um, at any rate, I felt that the colors that I chose were more in keeping with actual skin tones than perhaps what was painted. For the shoes, now this is going to sound terrible, but um, I chose this bright sort of mahogany because it reminded me of those um, vinyl shoes that you see sometimes on um, Les Avalon people um, that are like, they just, you know, they're like a beacon. So um, I thought that that would be kind of fun to do on his shoes. And for the floor, I chose raffia. Now, I'm not entirely certain. I've never worked with Raffia before. I was thinking an open stitch on the floor. Um, this color proved to be somewhat difficult to match. Raffia, um, I've never used it. I've never used it on 18 mesh, so it may involve some experimentation and it may not actually work out too well, so we may have to substitute something else that's a bit more um, 
accommodating to the 18 mesh canvas, but um, I think an open stitch with something rough would be a nice mimic for sort of the oak floor and um, I'm, I'm thinking it's an oak floor and maybe wide planks and whatever. I considered for a while like doing something with ribbon to make it look like um, uh, sawdust on the floor because oftentimes in dance halls they throw down sawdust so that people can, you know, glaze over the floor easily. Um, but then I thought, people probably aren't going to get that. So, you know, why bother? It's just going to look like the floor uh, broke out into um, measles or something. So, anywho, those were my choices. And as always with choices, um, experimentation is really what it's all about. So, um, I would take, if it was me who was doing this canvas, I would take these threads home and play with them and see if they're giving me the look that I want. And if not, I'd come back to the store and try and find some other things that might work. Because oftentimes what your initial ideas are, are not 100% bang on. So um, you can have all the greatest ideas in the world, but if the execution isn't there or um, the pattern stitch isn't working or whatever. I mean, there's a thousand different ways that something can go wrong. So I always think when I'm doing my own projects, I'm always thinking that a thread pull is sort of tentative until it's not. So um, hopefully my customer will feel the same way. <laughs> we, we shall see. I'm sure the phone will be ringing if, if uh, if they're not satisfied. So that's a good thing. I welcome the opportunity to discuss my choices. And um, we'll have another thread poll for you again. In the meanwhile, please follow us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and um, visit us anytime at myneedlepoint.com. Thank you.